All right, I have the pleasure of sitting here with Matt Leonard. He is the vice president of Edge Cloud, and he was just on stage uh, a few minutes ago. Welcome. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Thanks, Fritz. It's nice to be here. Uh, feeling great. Excited about the launch of our new Compute Cloud at Customer Isolated. All right, well, let's start a little high level. How are defense organizations looking at adopting cloud? Are they still wary? about it and if so why yeah it's a great question uh, i think Rand was just uh talking to this on stage during the last presentation actually uh adoption within uh defense is, is typically a very very slow process um you got to work through all the paperwork obviously um the ato processes themselves are incredibly long right like we're looking at sometimes as much as five to seven years um to work through the ato processes so for us personally with our roving edge devices we started the ato journey with u.s government about five years ago and we expect to get our um, accreditation at IL-5 here in the next hopefully few weeks. Um, but it is a very, very long process. Uh, we do also hear some sentiment from our international defense customers with concerns about um, administration changes and the potential political impact of relying on a US-based hyperscaler. Uh, and the way that we go about mitigating that is really uh, giving sovereignty options where everything is operated uh, and managed completely within country. So our customers have complete control over the platform. Okay, so you, you named two things, the speed of, of getting approved and also uh, our sovereign, the sovereign capabilities of our cloud. What are some other things that are helping defense organizations, you know, feel more comfortable with the cloud? Uh, really just familiarity, right? So we're trying to get the platforms out there and expose it to them. We're working with key partners in defense and getting them onboarded into our platform and working together to win with Oracle and the partnerships that we have. Uh, and that's really helping a lot of these uh, defense customers get more comfortable because these are solutions that they're familiar with, um, that they already deploy in their tactical situations. And we're showing them that how we can enable the speed of iteration running on top of cloud services. You mentioned Roving Edge before. How is that um, enabling technology in remote and complex environment, and, and what is the impact of that? Right, so, so what Roving Edge delivers is OCI services into the most extreme conditions on the planet, right? So we, we actually built it initially for US military and they've subsequently expanded it out, not just to international defense, but also into commercial opportunities. It turns out that when you build something for the US military, it has a broad application across a bunch of different industries. Um, what that's allowing is essentially OCI to run with no connectivity back to another OCI region, no contact back to our operations teams, run completely autonomously in those environments. And so, if you look at the way that modern warfare is evolving, you know, we talk about the Ukraine a lot and some of the conflicts that have been going on there, and the speed of iteration, what Roving Edge is enabling is, is customers to build on a common platform, build on these OCI services, test their solutions running in an OCI, even public region, and then deploy to the tactical edge operating at the highest security classification levels. I'm looking forward to it when it can be like in the button of my <laughs> my jacket. Me too. Yeah. Um, we also announced Oracle Clouded Customer Isolated. Can you tell us what that is and why that's important? Sure. I mean, so as we work with defense customers, you know, one of the things that we hear the most commonly is, is the need for isolation of workloads, the ability to run behind an air gap. Um, we have Oracle Isolated Region uh, and OCI is amazing. We've, we've managed to build the smallest regions on the planet, smaller than any other cloud vendors. Uh, but the starting point for that is still fairly high. Um, it's a big investment, it's a long pipeline to get that out the door. With Compute Cloud, a customer isolated, what we can do is we can start very small at about a quarter rack. We can run that behind an air gap, we can deliver OCI core IaaS into that environment. And that allows our defense customers essentially to have their own deployment for their isolated workloads, you know, whether it's intelligence or defense or Air Force or Army. Um, they're able to deploy that into outpost locations. So if you look at US government here, they can deploy into Hawaii or Australia or New Zealand and have these locations where you're running the same common platform, same set of services, no modifications to your code, but able to run in these potentially air-gapped environments uh, w without needing to take a dependency on any external network. Now the big topic of the day in general is AI. So we're talking about roving edge and cloud customer isolated. 
how can those environments benefit from AI? Roving Edge and Compute Cloud, a customer at the end of the day, are, are OCI core IaaS services. We're delivering platform capabilities in, we're not delivering solutions to problems. And what we see in the field is, is problems, and AI is enabling a lot of the solutions. So back here in our demo booth, we have a number of really interesting solutions from tactical 5G. So 5G in a box, you can actually strap a 5G network onto your backpack and walk around with it. Uh, you can enable Vision AI, so CoreSight uh, with their Fortify platform is running facial recognition um, and that's being used in a number of military zones around the planet um, and it's the leading uh, biofacial recognition system. And so they're essentially able to build a list of known suspects using the Vision AI running inside of their platform. They're able to then identify a suspect at a, at a very high degree of accuracy. One of our other partners in the Kaniku, they actually built like an organic uh, chip that's capable of sniffing one drop of fentanyl in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Um, and so AI is enabling these type of use cases. Can you imagine a world where you sit in the in, in the button, um, the, a police officer is able to walk up to a, a, a stoppage on the road and, and essentially using Kaniku's technology running on top of OCI, effectively um, understand is there is the, is the bomb making materials, are there fentanyl, there are other drugs that that officer is now able to detect using the Kaniku chip powered by OCI. That same use case, that officer is wearing a body cam, that body cam is creating video footage and one of the cool use cases that we're seeing is they're actually able to use AI to transcribe and build that daily report that the officer would have spent four hours doing instead of doing productive police work. They're able to transcribe and build an AI based report for that officer uh, using the camera. So the, the things that we can do in AI are incredible. It's just we're providing the hardware and the platform to build upon and, and the use cases just keep proliferating through our partners. That's fantastic. Now one of the other things you talked about is the deployment time, mm -hmm. you know, six to eight weeks. Uh, what is the path to deployment for solutions like this? It's a great question. Well, first of all, we like you to place an order. <laughs> <laughs> But after you've done that, really for Compute Cloud a customer, it's really about data center readiness, right? Like, does the customer have a space that's ready to take the, the shipment? As soon as we get verification from the customer, that's go. We build to order. So all of our C3 isolated uh, modular hardware, you can choose how much compute, how much storage, how much GPU that you need in a particular deployment. Once we get that data center readiness, we build, we ship. We then send uh, trained field engineers, whether it's the customers, our staff or partners or, or Oracle uh, field engineers. We take them out and we bring that system up and once they're good to go, we walk away and it's at that point able to run completely air gapped. Now on the other side, we did talk about Roving Edge as well. Roving Edge, uh, we could just ship it next day, right? If it's a very large order, obviously we need to send it to the manufacturer, but if it's one or two orders for a POC, we can ship next day. There's no readiness required because it will literally run off that wall socket right over there just uh, drop shipped right into exactly. my backyard. Yes. I love it. Great, thank you so much, Matt. No problem.